day and how y'all doing today i hope you're having a good day so far you are watching kingdom road with yours truly sterling march where we teach the correct interpretation of the kingdom of god today's topic will be why god does not allow women to be leaders in the church now before i get started i know this is a very controversial issue and there are many opinions about it but the thing is as an ambassador of Christ, we are embellished to not teach our opinion, but to teach the word. Okay, God said we should not teach for doctrine the commandments of men. So this is not about opinion. This is about what God wants. And let me say as a disclaimer right now, it's not that women cannot be leaders in the church. Okay, women are just as smart as men but it's God's order it's God's order and I will outline for you how he has illuminated that to us in his word now let us know that that's what he wants and there's a reason for that and I will give you that as well okay so I just want you ladies to know I love you all and this is not a knock against you all but we must stay in alignment with the word of God and the word is such that not everyone can receive it not everyone can receive it and that's why Jesus Christ said only a few will find me only a few but I pray that by the end of this teaching you my viewer will appreciate and receive what God has commanded okay so we're gonna get right into it but before we do I want to ask you to share please share with your friends with your pastors your church mates your whatsapp buddies Facebook friends, put it on your YouTube channel, man. Whatever you got to do, we gonna we have to be are commanded to go into the world, so you can go with me by sharing my teaching. If you believe it is correct, I don't expect you to do so. If you don't think it's correct, so please do. Okay, do that for me. Do that for God, because if you do think it's right, then it's only right that you should share it, right? Because that's, that is God's number one commandment to us to go into the world. That's Jesus' number one commandment. Go into the world, he said. Once you've gotten the message, take it to the world. I need the world to hear it. Because I will not return, he said, until the entire world has heard it. Okay? So before we get started, we want to say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time, this day, this moment, Lord God, that we can illuminate your word, Father. We can share knowledge, for you have said that for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. Not because of sin. I gave it my son as a solution for sin. But because we don't know who we are. And so this show is all about teaching knowledge. Giving people the truth about who we truly are so I thank you father that you have brought that to life in my spirit you've given that to me as my thrust into this work Lord God and I am so elated so elated so delighted that you have given this assignment to me father and you've qualified me for it through my study and my devotion to you thank you my father I pray I make you proud through this broadcast today give me the skill I need and your anointing to do this work in the mighty name of Jesus I pray why God does not allow women to be leaders in the church this is an issue that has sparked much debate in the church some Christian denominations have not, have not allowed women to be officials of any level of the service while others have gone so far as to ordain them to priesthood so who is correct or incorrect in their determination? The Word of God gives us a clear understanding of what God desired in this regard through certain end samples initiated during man's creation. Through that process, God demonstrated a defining difference between his creation of the two genders. Now let me just make one thing clear here. God only made two. Two. Let's get that out of the way, right here and now, male and female, that's it. He first made one like him, and that was the male, 
and the other, the female, from the one he first made, with the intent that the latter was to receive all instruction from the former in godliness and intended existence of men. To put it simply and succinctly, woman was not made in God's image and likeness. Woman was made in the image of the man and who she was to be led of. Let me prove that for you. 1 Corinthians 11 and 7 says, 1 Corinthians 11 and 7, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Now, that's a perfect way to start this off. I don't, if you believe in God and you trust in his word, that is enough right there. For he, the man, is the image of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. She's not the glory of God. She is the glory of the man. Okay? Throughout our lives, we have always been taught that when God refers to man in his word, more often than not, he's referring to mankind, meaning male and female. This is incorrect. His entire blueprint is centered around the male gender, with which he identifies himself, with the converted female to be the fruit of the male's correct alignment with him, the male being the receiver of a spirit for completeness of full life via his breath. Remember, he breathed into the man when he made the man, but he didn't breathe into the woman. He wanted the man to be different from the woman. And when the, woman, and the man was made, when the woman was made, sorry, he didn't, he, he, the man didn't, could not pass on the Holy Spirit to her. Because the Holy Spirit did not live in this bone that, she, that was used to make her. The Holy Spirit doesn't live in human tissue. He lives in our soul. And that's what made man alive in God. God declared both, both to have dominion, but the female's dominion will come through her submission to the man. And only via that submission could she attain righteousness in God. Just as through the man's submission to God would he be able to do the same. Ephesians 5, 22-24 says, Wives should submit to their husbands as they do to the Lord. 23. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is savior of the body. That's a huge, very important statement right there as to how a wife is supposed to be towards her husband. This is saying she's supposed to reverence him. Remember the Bible says, Sarah called Abraham, Lord, that wasn't a mistake. Wives should submit to their husbands as they do to the Lord. Wow. You know how serious that is? God is saying here that the man is the priest of the family. And the family is meant to be the foundation of his church. The church instead has become a religious organization leading the family. Ain't that some nonsense? It's backward now. Maybe that's why we have so much divorce in the church now. Because the church is leading, this so-called church, I should say, is leading the family. But the family is supposed to be the foundation of the church. It's supposed to learn of God directly from God and bring what they have learned directly from God into the church, not the church putting something into the family. That's why it's so messed up. Okay, verse 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Wow. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. 
that means just as devoted as you are as a church is to Jesus Christ himself just as devoted as that the wife is supposed to be to her husband she's supposed to reverence him that's a pretty strong and defining statement that provides a clear relational hierarchy between man and woman intimating that a man is to be considered as a priority to the woman even with the same energy as she regards God himself a woman is to submit herself to her husband with the same conviction as to God because he is God's representative of himself toward her see we, we get this thing so messed up now that's, that's why the families have become dysfunctional even Christian families and a woman can't submit to the man no more The male was in fact originally created holy, holy. But the female becomes holy by submitting to the male in obedience to God's command to submit to him. Therefore, it is not her duty to teach the male, but his to teach her in all things. God will never bypass the male to go to the female in any relationship. Never. It is not his order. The male is his representative to the female in all things. I just read the scripture for you. A woman is to submit to her husband as unto God in all things. Before I move on, please be advised of God's counsel in 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for instruction, for conviction, for correction, for training in righteousness. So please, don't cherry-pick the word and take out what you want for your purpose and discard the rest. Don't do that. The minute you do that, you're finished. God said, if you take anything from his word, if we remove any part of his word, your name shall be removed from the book of life. That's how serious that is. You must take all of it, all or nothing. To put it succinctly, the male's dominion was given out as creation with hers to come after learning of God from her husband. It's as simple as that. It began at the very beginning of man. When God said in Genesis 1, 26 to 27, and God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. That's the scripture. In the image of God created he him. And then it says, male and female, he created he them. Now, why would God say in the image of God created he him? And then said, male and female created he, he them. The latter part of the scripture has been mis often misunderstood. If God firstly makes the statement that he made, he, that he created man in his own image in the image of God created he him he and stops he's saying here I made him in my image but I created all mankind male and female that's what he's saying I only created one in my image him but I create then I created male and female That's why he makes sure, makes a distinction between the two. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay, if he, if he wanted to say he created both of them in his image, he would have said, in the image of God created he them. But he makes a distinction, created he him. The proof is that after he made that statement, he then only made one being after himself. He never went back to the earth. 
never went back to the earth. A man representative of the representative of the male gender that he had himself ascribed to. Then he breathed the Holy Spirit into the image of himself only that he had made. Only the man. The breath of life represented not physical life, but spiritual life to his soul, making the male a God like him. Jesus said in, in Psalms to King David, Ye are gods, but you will die like men. Because you don't know who you are. The Bible says in Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed his nostrils in, into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He became alive in God. Not physically. The woman was also physically alive, but she was never breathed into. The animals were also physically alive, but they were never breathed into. The one who was breathed into was different from them. He was made a God, just like God. Just a weaker version or a smaller version or a lesser version of God. Much lesser, but lesser, but a God still. With power to do the same things that God did. To speak things into being. And Jesus demonstrated those things when he came to earth. And remember what he said? Everything that I do, you shall also be able to do even greater than that what I did. And he spoke to food. He spoke to the wind and waves. He spoke to the demons and made them come out. And when he created the earth, Jesus, he spoke it into being. So, the male was made with eternal life. The female who did not receive God's spirit would have to acquire life through the spirit via submission to the male. Because that was God's command to her. Okay. The male via the spirit of God was made a God. Just like God at his creation. The woman was created like the man, but without the spirit, which made him a God. Like I said before, God never breathed into her. I'll read that scripture for you again. 1 Corinthians 11, 7-9. For a man indeed not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Verse 8, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Man didn't come from woman. Woman came from man. Verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman. Ooh, wow. But the woman for the man. So, if the man wasn't created for the woman, as this verse just said, who was he created for? God had a purpose for him. He would be God's minister to reconciliation. Because God knew exactly what was going to happen. This clearly indicates that God made the man for himself. God had a specific purpose for the male that encompassed all his plans for the human race. And that was to be his conduit of imaging, power, and leading of spirituality to the family. Everything that God had for mankind was to come through the male. The, the male was made a God. The things that he was capable of by his creation, the female was not capable of. Remember now, when God made the woman, it was, the man, it was the man who gave her the classification of woman. And it was her who gave her her name. And it was him who told the animals 
what their purpose would be. Remember the Bible says, whatever he called them, that's what they became. That was the power that God gave him. He told the lion what he would be, how he would perform. He told the elephant what he would be and how he would perform. He told every animal what he would be. That was the power and the authority God gave him. He told the trees what type of fruit they would bear. That was his work. The Bible tells God told him when God created him before the fall, cultivate the earth. And that was not with hands. Because we know that when God gave him work the second time after the fall, it was with his hand. By the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. You will have to work the ground now because now the earth is cursed because of your transgression. Now, this is not a slight of the woman, okay? Like I said before, this is just the order of God. Not now, please, now, please recall that the woman and the animals, like I said, were also alive, but they were never breathed into. They were not alive in God. Their life force was purely physical. They were not created alive in their souls. They were born, they were created dead. They were created dead. I'm going to give you a scripture regarding that in a moment. Neither could the rib of Adam transfer the spirit of God who gave him life to, who gave him life to the woman as he, the Holy Spirit, does not live in human tissue but in the soul of the male. Yet the woman was made with a soul having the capacity to receive the spirit of God similarly to her husband but could only receive him through an awareness that was to later come from devotion to God via knowledge from and through her husband, via his connection. Her tests and trials would soon come. If you recall, when God made Adam, he gave him instructions concerning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When God gave Adam that knowledge of the tree of good and evil and the instructions not to eat from it, Eve did not even exist. And there's no evidence in the Bible that God ever spoke to Eve about that. Or spoke to her at all. God, There's no evidence that God ever spoke to Eve. Until after the transgression. So, the knowledge that she had, that we know she had, when she had the conversation with the serpent, about the tree, and not to eat from it, and what God said would happen if she did, that she would die, she got from Adam. He taught her that. That was his job, to give her knowledge. And God tells us, gives us some scripture concerning knowledge between the man and the woman as well. We're going to get to that as well. Okay? God did all of this intentionally because of the many vital events he would perform through the male, including priesthood which would be his key instrument, Christ being his high priest, towards man's reconciliation through salvation. That was only for the man. This, this priesthood, which has a pivotal role in the reconciliation process, was sanctified by God only for the male via ancient laws given to the Israelites. Jesus himself demonstrated his keeping with that ordinance by never selecting a female disciple. What did he say? In John 5, 5 and 19. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. That's why Jesus never chose a woman. Because he only did what he saw his Father do. And his father never chose a woman to have any part of the divine ceremony of the temple or the tabernacle or the tent of meeting. A woman couldn't even come near the tent. Not even come near. She had to be within a certain distance from the tent of meeting. 
The first original ministers created by God for the ritual of the redemption of man by a human began in the wilderness by a decree by God that only Aaron and his sons could be those ministers or priests. As descendants of the patriarch Levi, of which anyone involved in the service of the sanctuary had to be descended. Like I keep saying, so y'all Christians, people who call yourselves Christians, Stop calling yourselves Levites. You're not Levites. You cannot be a Levite. And God never asked you to be an Israelite either. You are this you if you are of Christ, you are a seed the seed of Abraham. That has nothing to do with the Levites, with the Israelites. It is a descendant by faith, not by bloodline. So you can't be a Levite. Only Israelites could be Levites. And only of the tribe of Levi could they be Levites. They had to be. And they had to be male. So, like I said, no female could come near the divine instruments of worship. Up until the Christ came to earth and after, this has never changed. Until this day, it has never changed. Even when in the book of Revelation it affirms the making of kings and priests by Jesus Christ, it was referring to the male. Revelation 1 and 6 says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Women cannot be kings, and certainly cannot be priests, according to God's pattern historically. It has never been done by God. And Jesus didn't do it either. So it wasn't in the Old Testament and it wasn't in the New. So where your pastor's getting it from, I don't know. You're out of order. Because that is not God's order. Jesus said, I, have, I do what I see my father do. That's why he never do it. You don't think out of 12 people he chose to be with him. You don't think at least one of them could have been a woman? You think that was coincidence? That he never chose a woman? You think it's coincidence that no woman was ever a part of the divine ceremony of the temple or the tent of meeting or the tabernacle? That it was never allowed, a woman was never even allowed in it, in there? Do you think that's coincidence? Don't worry, I can get you, I can give you some more scripture for that. Okay. This is what it says in Genesis 3. Sorry. Like I said, women cannot be kings and certainly cannot be priests, according to God's pattern historically. He commanded from the very first woman to fall under the rulership of her husband forever. This is what he said in Genesis 3 and 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now how are you going to be a pastor to a man if God already declared that your husband shall rule over you? How? 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 You can't pastor someone who has been commanded to rule over you. You out of order to do that. He is your priest. You can't be his priest. As a female. Please note, this is given before the Mosaic law. But this ain't got nothing to do with the law. Okay? But it was a law given. It was, it was a law because it was given by God, but it was before the Mosaic law. As a perpetual ordinance, women still suffer pain in childbirth because of that law. The only reason women today suffer pain in childbirth is because of that law. God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. That's the only reason women suffer in, in childbirth today. Because of that statement by God. 
and it still stands today because of the sin by that first woman. See, God is a God of history. He doesn't change. Once he declares something, it becomes a law. Perpetual. It stands forever. What he does, though, is he will give you a better law under a different system. That's what he did with Jesus. He gave us a different priesthood, a better priesthood, because he placed us under a different dispensation. He didn't cancel the law, but he gave us a dispensation of grace. So that those who are under grace, and it isn't like the Gentiles have a choice anyway. We can be under law. We were never under law. Only the Israelites were given the Mosaic law. The only way a Gentile could be under the Mosaic law is that he has to obey all of the over 600 laws that God gave to the Israelites. So the stranger could become a part of the Israelite nation, but he had to obey every single law, and there were over 600 So in our Gentile today could be under no law because we don't even, <laughs> we can't even begin to live under those laws and obey all those laws. Our mind can't even conceive that. Okay? But some of those laws were really, really drastic. And they will probably be very difficult to obey in this time. Okay, so God deliberately refers to those for whom he assigns headship in every instance all throughout the Bible as sons, sons, that ain't no mistake, that's intentional, sons, in every instance because he's referring to the male, even in this holy declaration, John 1 and 12, he said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. This is still referring to the male. Sons. The female receiving her adoption to the family of God through submission to the son. Who was originally given the Holy Spirit at his creation. And made a God. That ain't changed. Jesus still says, he has God's, he hasn't, when God does something, it stands forever. Even though we fell, what God decided within himself to do, as make us gods, we are gods. Jesus said it in Psalms, after all the mess that happened in Eden, he said, he's still saying, ye are gods, but you will die like a man. Because you are ignorant of it. That's why God says, for lack of knowledge, you are being destroyed. You don't even know that you are God. But you continue to live like a man. When you, are, you have been given power to be a God, and I came to earth, Jesus is saying, to restore that power back to you, but you can't, you can't receive it because you don't know. And you won't try to find out. You won't study. Even if he doesn't, even if the male does not know God intimately, it is still his command to the female to submit to him. You know that that, that is powerful. That means then, if the if the female has received salvation in this modern age, but her husband is not saved, she still has to submit to him. Why? Because just by virtue of the fact. That she is joined to him through marriage, which is God's institution, she must obey all the ordinances of that institution, which is a wife must submit to her husband in all things. 
saved or not. He was created a God. He's still a God. He just don't know it. Just don't know it. He don't know what it means. But if you study, he would know. I'm sorry, ladies, but you weren't made a God. But you are still, or you still, listen, you still privy to all of God's blessings. As long as you obey God. It's just a distinction that God gave to the male for reasons of his own. That has to do with your salvation. That was to come through the male. The restoration, listen. See, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But the restoration of the human race back to God is to come through the male. That's why God sent his son as a male. And that's why he only chose males to teach this message and take it to the world. That doesn't mean that you as a female cannot witness on your own. But you cannot be a pastor in a church. Keep listening. God required all females to submit for his blessing. And he has required a similar treatment to the characteristics of the male headship toward the female. Okay, 1 Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise ye husbands, listen now, dwell with them according to knowledge. I told you, God has placed the knowledge of mankind, the existence of man in the male. That's why he's telling the male here, dwell with them, your wives, according to knowledge. Teach them, he's saying. Giving honor to them by giving them the knowledge. As unto a weaker vessel. Why is she weaker? She, this is not talking about physical weakness. She's weaker because she doesn't have what the Holy Spirit has placed in the male. It's his job to give it to her, to teach her. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. See, they are heirs together of the grace of life. They both can receive life in their soul. But the man is created with life, was created with life. And the female has to devote herself to the man to and allow him to rule over her to have life now even though the man lost adam lost life in his soul when he sinned in the garden by eating that fruit that doesn't change that they both now have to submit themselves to god to become alive again all of us because we are all born dead since adam sinned we all born dead. But it doesn't change the purpose of the male toward the female. It doesn't change that. We all have to do the same things to receive salvation. And I'm getting ahead of myself again. Let <laughs> me don't do that. Okay? God instructs the male in this verse to use the knowledge he has given him to dictate the way he acts towards his wife. Being mindful that she was made weaker intentionally to follow the stronger, complete male. Originally, male, the male was made complete. The female was not made complete. She was made as a weaker vessel. That's why Satan could get to her. And that's why Satan approached her and not the male. He knew he could never get the male to disobey God intentionally. But he knew someone who could get him to do it. Who someone who he would trust. And that's what happened. He trusted his wife, Adam. That was his big mistake. That's why God said to him, Because you have listened to your wife, the earth is now cursed. As long as you didn't listen to her. 
she would have remained in her sin by herself. She didn't have me in her, but the power to pass down her essence to, to her offspring. That's you, Adam. You have that power, only you. If only she ate it, you could have still produced sinless offspring through her sinful womb. The same way Jesus came through sinful Mary and remained sinless. Same way. Adam was conceived with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was conceived with the Holy Spirit. You see the same? That's why they're called the two Adams. They were the same before the fall. Okay? So, the male, as, like I said, God instructs the male to, in this verse to use the knowledge he has given him to dictate the way he acts, dictate the way he acts toward his wife, being mindful that she was made weaker intentionally to follow the stronger, complete male, not referring to physical strength, but to lesser knowledge. This means that no matter what other honorable thing either does, their treatment of each other must be in accordance with godly instruction. To receive his blessing, this order must be maintained. Like I tell you, no matter what happens, and just because of what happened in the garden, though they both fell, God's instruction of how one is to be to the other remains. The male is still to rule over the female. He has been he was given dominion over the female. Dominion. That's what rulership means. And I read that scripture for you. He shall rule over thee. Not just be I don't know, what a, a mate, a, a sex sexual partner or a, someone to help you build a house or to have children. He is to rule over you. He is to have dominion over you. I told you, only the man was made in the image of God. Only the man was made a God. The man was given dominion at his creation. But before the woman was able to learn from her husband so that she could become converted, see, Mary Eve was supposed to become the first conversion. She was supposed to be the, be the first person to be witnessed to about God by the one who had the Holy Spirit in him. And that was her husband, Adam. You see why? You see how God just does the same thing over and over and over? And he's still demanding that of born again believers today to witness, to help others be converted. Eve was supposed to be converted. She was made without life in her soul, which is everything. Physical life doesn't mean nothing much. You only got what God said we have now, three score and ten. That's all he promises now. They lived longer than Adam lived almost a thousand years because he only committed one sin. One sin. And that was eating of the fruit. He, and he was never able to commit that sin again because he was put out of the garden. But God never gave them another law. Never gave them another commandment. He didn't give laws again until, a law again, until Moses. So, the man has always been his instrument towards his divine purpose in the earth intentionally and has always been. The male has been his instrument towards his divine purpose in the earth intentionally and has always been. Modern interpretation of the Bible led us to believe that the word sons is used in most instances. It means male and female. That's not, that's incorrect. As I said before, the male is the image and glory of God, not the female as stated in Corinthians 11 and 7. It is he who God made the receiver of all his will for earth in every instance, including reconciliation to the Christ. Even the angels were all identified by male identity. Everything 
led of God is through the male. You think that's not coincidence? God doesn't make mistakes. Everything he did, he did through a male. Everything. The word, listen, God don't have a problem. Listen, the word daughter is used more than 200 times in the Bible, you know. It isn't like God didn't even mention the word, like he, only said, like he said sons, meaning male and female, because that's just what he meant. God used the word daughter many times. He could have said, he didn't have to say sons. He, he could have said sons and daughters. He used the word daughters in his word over 200 times. I checked. But never in terms of leadership. Never. Of any kind. She too was the receiver of God's declaration of dominion, you know, but through her submission to the male. Either through her father a husband or brother or even brother-in-law historically. In the Old Testament, a woman, if her, if her husband died, she had to submit either back to her father or her brother or even a brother-in-law. It had to be a male. She had to submit herself under a male. That's how deep this thing goes. Even a brother-in-law. Her submission to the headship of the male in her adult godly relationships guarantees a blessing. Disobedience to God's order brings a curse. Now I know there are many of you who know the Bible who say, well, what about Deborah or Deborah? Okay, let's go there. Deborah became a judge in Israel during a time when Israel was at one of its lowest moments with God. He had given them over to the Canaanites because of their evil ways. This is what it says in Judges 4 and 1. But the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. Verse 2. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Forward to verse 4. Now Deborah, or Deborah was a prophetess. The wife of Lapidith was judging Israel at that time. So how did, how did a woman become a judge in Israel? Listen, Israel was so evil at that time that a woman, contrary to God's order, was de deciding the issues for them. And God gave them over to another nation. All that happened during the time when God sold them to another nation. Listen, even she herself knew this was out of order. She did. Listen to what, what happened. She summoned Barak, a le another leader in Israel of the army, and gave him a plan for rescuing Israel from the nation that God sold them to. He demanded that she accompany him. This was her reply. <laughs> Listen, Judges 4 and 9, she said, I will certainly go with you. Nevertheless, the journey you are about to take will not be for your honor and glory. She was talking about Israel when she said that. It will not be for the honor and glory of Israel. Because the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. She knew that that would be out of line. And that her being in the position of a judge in Israel was not God's order. It just so happened because Israel was so wicked that a woman was able to become a judge in Israel. And God was wroth with them. But he just, he just didn't, he just, I can tell you, he sold them. He, he allowed them to be dragged off into slavery. This is one of the times he did that. He did it before with, with Nebuchadnezzar. But she herself knew that it was not God's order for a woman to lead in Israel and declared so. She told him, I can go with you. He asked her to lead them. She said, I'll go. But this, this victory, this journey will not be for the honor and glory of Israel. Because the Lord will sell Sisera. If we win this battle, he will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. 
a woman will be winning this battle. And that is not be for not be to, to Israel's honor and glory. Because this is not right. See, you gotta study the word to know this word. There are things that happen in this Bible that happen for a reason. And God is telling us why it happened. But many of us we we dash over it and don't really understand what God is saying. This is not God was saying, yeah, this this was not my order. It just happened that way because of the evil of Israel as a nation. And when they were out of order and did evil, things that shouldn't have happened happened. And one of them was her becoming a judge. Listen, in that part of the world, even today, it is rare if at all, for a woman to become any kind of political leader. Right now, to this very day, in the, in the, in the East, in the Middle East. Right now. So imagine this thousands and thousands of years ago. The role of the female is submission to the male as God's order and remains in this configuration even to this day. A woman can serve in the church. But accordingly, according to the Bible, only under a male's leadership. She cannot be a priest as God historically recognizes only men in the ceremony of the sanctuary. The Apostle Timothy states in 1 Timothy 2, 12 to 14. Listen now. This is an apostle of God. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And then he gave his reason. Now for those who believe that this has to do with Jewish culture, which is the reason why he was saying this, he makes his reference so you could see why he's saying what he's saying. And he goes all the way back to Genesis. He said in verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And then he made a statement that blew my mind, that opened my mind up to realize something I didn't realize before. He said, verse 14, this is First Timothy 2 and 14, and Adam was not, he said, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. In this verse, Timothy intimates that the woman, because she is the reason sin was introduced to the world, though her husband was the vessel, him being the progenitor or originator of his race, which he passed sin on to, she cannot be minister or priest to facilitate the divine ceremony of the church towards reconciliation, because she was the reason the sin came in the first place. She can't be a priest towards salvation. She's, the woman is, see, I know, I know ladies. A lot of you probably saying, yeah, but that wasn't me. I told you all, God is very strong on history. And when she did, when, Ad, when Eve did that, committed the first sin in existence, and mankind's existence that became a scarlet letter on, on on the woman remember God cursed the woman and that curse still remains on the female to this day ladies I know that's hard and I'm sorry it has to be that way but that is what God did but, you can, but it doesn't stop you from receiving salvation. You just have to do what he says in regards to the male. You must submit. Any woman that cannot submit cannot receive salvation. It's as simple as that. Listen. She is the cause or was the cause. Therefore cannot be the instrument of correction. 
she was the cause of sin on the world. Like I said, although her husband was the vessel, the Bible says by one man sin entered into the world, it was Adam. But she is the one who allowed Satan to deceive her, and she made a deliberate decision to disobey God. Adam didn't do that. And she took the fruit to Adam and he ate it because he trusted his wife in giving him the fruit. And that's what he told God, the woman you gave me, gave me the fruit, and I ate it. And God told him, why, God didn't say, why you committed this sin? Why did you disobey me? No, God said, why did you listen to your wife? You know she's weaker. I didn't breathe into her. That's why Satan could deceive her. You are not supposed to let her lead you. You are supposed to lead her. And so God makes sure spells it out plainly from now on then you shall be ruled by your husband and you shall be cursed in delivering children that curse still remains so she cannot be an instrument of correction from sin she's the reason why sin came and i'm sorry ladies but that Dispensation has been placed on all women. That's why God never allows a woman, a woman to be a pastor or a priest. They stay the same thing, basically. Some institutions call it priests, some call it pastors, some call it ministers, some call it bishop, whatever. That's the re that's why. That's the main reason why a woman cannot be a priest or pastor that's god god does not change it just happened that but listen yes her transgression and her punishment was passed down to all women her curse was passed down to all women, yes. But what Adam did was passed down to all mankind. Same thing. History is everything to God. But it don't stop no show. The male and female are both able to receive salvation if they obey God. First, you have to have knowledge. You have to learn what it means to have salvation. You can't have salvation if you don't know, understand what it means. You got to study. So your application can be approved. This indicates, sorry, like I said, um, and then it says in verse 15, Notwithstanding, talking about the woman still, she shall be saved in childbearing. Saved in childbearing. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. This indicates that a woman's main and most important responsibility is to, to her husband as commanded by God in the book of Genesis. In the bearing and raising of children. Submitting herself to God's representative, the man, for all instructions and examples of godliness. Her salvation is accredited to her mainly through the performance of her role in the home as a mother. As long as she keeps the faith, her works of devotion to motherly purpose demonstrating her faith. That's why Jesus said, faith without works is dead. Because as a woman, you can be saved because of your faith, but your faith must be demonstrated by your obedience to the instruction. Excuse me. Faith without works is dead. That's your, that's the, that is the commandment to the woman. You see, what is sad now is that many women feel 
that being a mother and homemaker is not an honorable thing anymore. They feel that's a slight. That a woman is capable of doing more than that. Well, yes. Like I said, a woman is as smart as a man. Just as, as, as intellectually capable as a man. Maybe smarter. But she is not blessed in the way that the man is blessed to be the head. His job is to lead his family. Her job is to be the bringer of his family into the world. And that is as honorable as it gets for the woman. It does not get better than that. Because see what it says? She shall be saved in childbearing. Listen. When a female becomes an adult, according to God, According to this, her main purpose is to be the mate of a male. Now, I know females, y'all don't like that, but that is what God created. He said, be fruitful and multiply. You are to be a helpmate to the man. That's your main purpose. Not to be out there to have a career. Is that why so many children are going astray? Because there's no mother in the home? She's too busy going after her career? Could that be the reason? I'm telling you all right now that that is the reason. Listen, people say is because there's no male in the home. No. It ain't because there's no male in the home. It ain't no female either in the home. Listen, a godly woman can raise godly children. Even if the man is off doing what he has to do, as long as she has God, anything is possible for her. She can complete her purpose in God as long as she has him and raising godly children. So don't tell me that a godly woman without a husband can't raise godly children. Of course she can. Of course she can. A woman of God can do anything God instructs her to do. With his power in her. But alas, there is no male or female in the home, basically. The, the children are being cared for by care, caretakers, kindergarten, nursery, oh, um, home keepers. That's who they're learning life from. Your maid, is she safe? Is she, is she, is she a foreigner from another country, country that you don't even know what her religious background is? That's what you got raising your children? And you wondering why your children are growing up with all kind of funny ideas of, of, about God? Well, the person who they spend all their time with is who they're learning from. That's their mother. So we believe that the woman believes now that she has to go into the world to work so she can give her children the best, I guess, or whatever. That, that's not true. That's not true. The best a child can get is a mother in the home. Their actual mother. Godly mother. Following the commandments of God. Just because the world wants an iPhone don't mean you have to have an iPhone. All the expensive things out there that people say they need, you don't have to have those things. You don't have to have those things. That's why women want to go into the world and work and have careers. Because they want stuff, things. They want to send their children to the best schools. Listen, your child can be an A student in a public school. If you are at home, oh, you don't even have to send them to school. 
you can homeschool your children. There have been many people who have homeschooled their children successfully. Be ye not conformed to this world. Be ye in the world, but be not conformed. Don't believe the lie. You don't have to have a lot of money to be have a happy life and live a good life in this world. You don't have to send your child to the most expensive school, schools to be successful. Public school children are successful too. You don't have to make six figures to be happy or to have a good life because you want the Mercedes, the six bedroom house, the property on the lake, and you say, that's the sign of my success. No. Many people who have money are very, very unhappy. Have you, have you been watching the news lately? You see these billionaire young guys, what they're going through? These multi-millionaire guys being persecuted because of the, some of the dumb things they do and say and beliefs that they hold? You can be happy and successful with one salary in your, in your family and have a happy life. Happy children, if you want to. Leave it up to God. God says, seek ye first my kingdom, and everything you need will be added to your life. That's my promise. Don't believe the lie. The world is lying. And it, because it wants to merchandise towards you. It wants to sell you stuff. And you've fallen for it. All of us falling for the lie. We need stuff. Every time a new phone comes up, we believe we got to have it. So we got to go work some extra hours to get that. Spending time away from doing things which you should be doing, studying the word with your children. Every time a new Maybach comes up, we got to have that. Because we want our neighbors to think we be up there. We want status. Excuse me, the Honda could do just as good as to get you from point A to point B. Comfortably in style. But that ain't good enough. You want to be like the people you see on Facebook. Don't fall for the lie, yeah? Don't be conformed to the world. That's our main problem, you know. We get caught up. So the women have left the home now. Do, do they want to be doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs. Now you know, being a doctor or a lawyer or someone like that requires a lot of time and it takes you away from your children. I know you want good stuff for them and the best stuff and stuff that you, you want to give them a life that you didn't have maybe. Well, listen, think, think carefully about that, yeah? Because in our childhood, I grew up I was born in the 60s and I grew up basically in the 70s. We had the best life as children that these kids could ever dream of having today. But nothing, nothing. We built our scooters. We built our skates. We built our toys. And we didn't get, we, 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 we sure we got bumps and bruises and stuff, but we didn't have to go to the hospital. <sighs> Listen. Her salvation is accredited to her mainly through the performance of her role in the home as a mother. And as long as she keeps her faith, her works of devotion to motherly purpose, demonstrating her faith. God being her ultimate authority in all things, and he directs this instruction. Lastly, some of you may be hanging on hanging your beliefs on this issue on the popular scripture that says there's no male or female in Christ. I know 
and if you're holding all of that and saying that using that as the basis of your your reasoning right let's study its context in which it's given Galatians 3 27 to 29 says for as many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ verse 28 there's neither Jew nor Greek there's neither bond nor free there's neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus and if ye be Christ then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise now what is the Apostle Paul saying here he's intimating that in putting on or receiving Christ once the prerequisite requirements are met which is the same for all anyone can become one with Christ and heirs of his promise to Abraham the requirements for receiving salvation are the same for all so what he's saying here is when it comes to receiving salvation there is no male or female everybody has to meet the same requirements to receive it but the difference of in the purpose of the male and female are given by this same apostle <laughs> and other apostles as outlined in this presentation I just gave you scripture from these same apostles will show you the difference between the male and female that there is a difference didn't I show you where Timothy said the woman must be silent in the church didn't I show you where Paul said and the male did not come from the female but the female from the male and the male was created before the female and that it was not Adam who was deceived but the male, the female was deceived but Eve was deceived and committed the transgression Even though there is the same requirement for receiving salvation, the purpose of the male and the female are different. They both have to meet the same requirements to receive salvation, but their purpose in serving Christ is different. The male being the head and the female being the submitted one. To the head in all adult female situations that was that's God's order and that, that is all gone all whack and been forgotten now and that's why the world is the mess is in today and it's get messier you see you see what's going on in the world right you see when you turn your TV what you see you see it? These 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 men don't even know who they are. They don't even know if they won't be male. The females don't even know if they won't be female. They trying to be male. The males trying to be female. Everybody has lost their order. They lost the order of God. And lost their understanding of what they support they are. And now they got how much genders? Twelve? Twenty five? Thirty? God created too. <laughs> we must study His Word in order to show ourselves our applications approved for salvation. We must study, or we will be lost. I hope I illuminated this subject matter and showed you why the female cannot be a pastor or a leader in the church. It is not for females. It was given to the male. Because the female is the one responsible for she's the reason why we have why Christ had to come. So she cannot be the solution. She cannot be the instrument to bring the solution or to teach the solution. God is, God's not having that. That's just as all. She can still be saved. She can receive salvation. No problem. But only through her obedience to the command to serve under the male. She is to be the helpmate of the male. Okay? 
so that brings us to the end of our teaching for today i hope i did some good hope i gave you enough information please listen to this teaching again as many times as you can listen to it study the scriptures that i gave go and research them for yourself do your study it's because of your lack of knowledge that you are being destroyed god says not because of sin god don't send nobody to, to hell you know mm -mm. we send ourselves there god has done all he can to prevent us from going to hell including dying himself for us he said but you don't know what i why I did what i did you don't understand why i'm offering you this you don't understand how important it is that you receive this salvation you think this is just some religious thing the same religion i'm trying to give you life because when you die you go into hell if you don't get life but he said but if you get life if you receive my gift you can live forever as you were meant to to do i created you originally to live forever why do you think adam lived for almost a thousand years his body was designed to live forever but because of that one sin, he died. But because it was only one, that's why he lived so long. Life. That's what it's about. Find out. Study. Show yourself approved. Get your application stamped. This one, enter into my kingdom. You must know. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I want you to be back here next week, please. And please follow my page. You can follow me on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter. Please follow, subscribe. Okay? And get on the train, man. And learn, get this knowledge. This knowledge is not common. Jesus said it. Only a few, he said, will find him. Because only a few people are teaching the correct interpretation of the word. I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm one of them. I know who I am. I know who I am. Because I'm devoted to God. That's why I am, I am confident that I have the correct interpretation. I submit myself to anything God says. I don't care what it is and how outlandish it may seem. I submit myself to that. And that's why he has given me truth and wisdom. Because I fear him in all his ways. So I thank you again for joining me. I want to see you here next week. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And be careful out there this week. Okay? Watch yourself. God bless you. I love you. And you enjoy the rest of the evening. Bye-bye.